Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Town. So in the previous episode we were building our new module town. We have the production actually set up and now we just need to get the trains delivering the various kinds of circuits over so we can finally start making our level 3 modules for our power suit. Um, also in the last episode we ran through the name suggestions for the town but we didn't quite have enough time to actually go through the name itself. Uh, we only had a couple of seconds at the end and rather than just write it out and leave it there I thought I'd uh, do it at the beginning of this one so I could uh, take a moment to run through why I chose it. I always like to talk about a bit about why I liked a particular name. So at the moment we're just setting up some walls. We've just come back from West, uh, West Point with a bunch of walls and stone and stone bricks so that we could finally uh, s like improve the defences here enough that biters can't just like walk through uh, when they feel like it. So we now have a proper continuous wall all around the sides that, uh, that matter and will uh, extend that a bit further uh, in the future. I think we're sort of running low on uh, ammo and turrets and stuff like that anyway, and I want to get this sorted. So I'm immediately um, in a bit of trouble because I'm trying to work out how to make a J when you only have a 3x5 space. I eventually come up with uh, a design for it, but I don't like it much, and I might do a bit of tweaking with that later to uh, make it look a bit nicer. But we continue on, um, occasionally checking the, the map to look at our other signs, basically looking at what font I use. Uh, because I sometimes forget about that. There are different ways you can make some of the letters and I want to make sure it's consistent So I'm uh, I think I'm looking around for a G now seeing if I've ever, ever uh, Made a town with a letter G in the name looks like I haven't so I try and make one and I realize that the only way This is really going to work is if I extend this to uh, to four wide and there we go And uh, that is our name. It is Julebra and it was suggested uh, suggested by I have written down here Derek Mebius uh, and in brackets Azrael. So thank you very much for that name. I very much like the idea of it and no one else came up with, with anything quite like it. And uh, the thing that caught my eye was the uh, the nice, I guess, pun to it, but I, I liked how that sort of fits the idea of how I want the, the town names to sound, which is um, that they've been around for a while and they're perhaps starting to lose the original meaning. And so if you're a bit confused as to why I've named it uh, Julebra, um, consider that when it was first built it would probably have been called Module Borough and uh, over time it may have just been shortened and uh, and like I, it's always interesting to see how that happens because you've got to wonder sometimes how like words can lose entire chunks and just become uh, shorter that way but it does happen and it, in this case I've uh, gone with that sort of idea of uh, people have forgotten what it was originally called it was originally called Module Borough and as time went on the name just morphed into a completely different word and no one knows why it's called that anymore and people would probably go, oh, but perhaps they used to manufacture jewellery or something like that, that would make sense. And it's always weird how that sort of thing can happen. So yeah, uh, I like that. And also I should mention that the name he suggested was slightly different, it was Jewel Berg. Uh, but Berg is the uh, the German uh, version of the suffix, whereas the English uh, is Burra, so I uh, modified it in that way. And in the process also looked up uh, exactly what Burra means, just to to find out if it was suitable, and as it turned out, it, it, it was really. Um, a borough uh, basically used to refer to a self-governed walled town, and of course it is a walled town. Um, I don't know about the self-governed bit, that's sort of in question, like how any sort of like government system works in these towns. I mean, I'm the only person in them really, so who knows. Um, and all the other ones just delivered stuff to each other and manufacture things, if you can count the machines as people, which you can if you're insane. Uh, so yeah, the um, the name quite fits because it is a walled town. I mean, all of them are, but this one is uh, is particularly um, good in the fact that it it was built to protect Colbury partially. The location was chosen uh, to protect Colbury, and so it will actually be functioning as a defensive town, and it will be uh, fighting against angry biters that are trying to get to the heart of the county. So that's quite cool, and um, also in case. Uh, Americans are a bit confused as to why I'm pronouncing it in this way. There's also, for some reason, a difference with how Americans pronounce it, even though I, I don't. I think I think it's sometimes used in American town names, which is weird because I think by the time um, American towns existed and got named, the suffix of Burr had already lost its original meaning, and was just a thing that people put on the end of a town name to make it sound nice. I'm not really sure. Uh, there's this whole thing about how it, the self-governing thing. Um, and I also found out that it's a completely pointless uh, term now, um, but you can still, like, towns can apparently apply to be called a borough, but it means nothing, really, 
apart from someone changes their name from like the title from chairman to mayor or something like that. So that's weird. But yeah, I quite liked it, and uh, we've not used it anywhere else so far. Uh, but yeah, if you're American, you may pronounce it. Uh, how is it? Bur Burrow? I think it's, it, you, you just call it. You'd call it Jewel Burrow, rather than a uh, Jewel Burrow, and so on. And there's weird stuff with how you say Edinburgh instead of Edinburgh, except it is sort of spelled Edinburgh. But anyway, enough etymology and random pronunciation discussion for now. Let's actually get to what's happening uh, in the game. And I'm setting up a new train. Just built it. Uh, in Jolbra and it will be delivering the various different kinds of circuits to it. I could have messed about with already existing trains and just tweaked with a couple of timetables and I probably could have made it work where everything delivered um, everything that was needed was delivered there and everything still worked properly but uh, I feel like we're getting to the sort of point now where the rail system will need like an overhaul anyway so I just set up a new train for it and we'll worry about the problems later and it will also make sure that um, the uh, the throughput is quite good and uh, there's no messing about with other stations so much. So uh, I just run around Chipton for a second fixing things up. It's being attacked fairly constantly. Nothing too major happened, I don't think. It was all fairly calm. And uh, we'll get back to working on the train. And I've uh, deliberately had it parking in the um, unused stations of as many... Uh, well, the unused platforms of as many stations as I can um, to try and take the pressure off other places. Because already we have at least two... Uh, trains visiting the uh, the Chipton westbound station and um, if we have a third one then it really starts to get quite congested and they're coming from different directions and stuff and it also starts to get very awkward so um, I'd rather just have the uh, the train park up in um, the eastbound station instead and uh, spread things out a little more evenly. So we set up the, the circuit loading, uh, a couple of stack inserters and chests and so on. We just split off from the main line, but uh, there's not that much in the way of circuits being made at the moment. I mean, there's, there's practically as much as can be made, but um, it's not really enough anymore. The The circuit system is not... Um, it, like the circuit production is not very high speed here. It was just made to function and uh, we'll, and go from there. So we will probably need to do some upgrading, but we'll also need to work out how to increase the, um, the supplies of iron and copper and things like that if we want to make that work. So that's something... To look into now that we have uh, a lot more circuit consumption going on we'll need quite a lot for the modules we will have to start uh, paying more attention to throughput and things like that which so far i've practically been ignoring i've only really done it for for coal because if coal goes down everything goes down so uh, i'm also sorting out a bit of an unloading system here because i noticed that the copper lines are getting a little bit thin on the ground in chips and indeed some of the uh, uh the smelters are no longer running but we have a copper supply over in Julborough, or sort of just outside it, uh, that we could uh, use to help bolster the supply. So what I'm going to do is set up some mining over there, and we'll have it loaded into this train so that it can unload on its way through Chipton and just help the production of circuits a bit. Bit of messing around with power there. It ends up with a bit of a weird system. We've got one bit of unloading nested inside another, and uh, it's sort of pointless now having the uh, the cargo wagons even, because that was the whole point of setting up the weirdness uh, with the unloading back at Julborough. And that was when my uh, expectation was that the train would turn around uh, each time it went around the system. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, forget that for a moment, because uh, Frackham has just been attacked and quite a lot of damage was done. We lost uh, about half a dozen turrets and a few walls, and uh, it goes to show that I should really pay some more attention to my uh, my eastern towns. I've been sort of ignoring them recently as if they're pretty much indestructible and uh, the biters have decided to remind me that that is most definitely not the case and so we'll fix everything up. Basically, because like in the past uh, the the biters in the east were generally not a problem because of all the trees stopping pollution and me pushing the biters beyond the pollution, I've basically got the idea into my head that like Frackham and, uh, and Newton are not in any sort of danger ever even though they are and I keep seeing alarms go off and I think oh well nothing's exploded so it's fine except it looks like what happened is all the turrets ran out of ammo at the same time and so the brightest just had free reign and just took them out one by one till they reached some that did have some ammo left in them so we've got it all uh, repaired and resupplied and everything and that should be fine for a while and I'll make sure not to ignore alarms over there uh, so much in future Spot some weirdness with a signal here. It looks like some recent update has made it so that a signal can't be placed in that particular spot anymore. Uh, but luckily we can just move things around a bit and that all works again. And we arrive back in Chipton to continue what we're doing. Uh, where well, we need to sort out the coal loading. At the moment I don't think any of the stations other than Chipton that this train will be visiting actually have coal loading in them. So we'll uh, run the line over to the, um, the eastbound uh, platform and get that all sorted. 
Uh, just using fast inserters, I think mainly because I'm running out of materials. I've left the car over in uh, Julbra and I've got basically nothing left. I'm just making uh, a couple of belts and inserters with what I have remaining. I do manage to make some stack inserters, actually. I think I then use those to, uh, uh, to upgrade the system because the fast ones quite possibly won't cut it. The train isn't going to spend too long here, probably, and it's got a, a fairly long journey in between here. And uh, the last thing I want is uh, it just shutting down in the middle of, uh, of its journey somewhere. So yeah, originally I thought the train would be turning around each time it did its rounds, because I thought that after Chipton it would go out to the west again and then take a new south line down to Flaskmere before I remembered that there is already a line going practically straight down to Flaskmere from Chipton anyway, and so there wouldn't need to be that. So instead of um, Chipton being a bit uh, sort of uh, turning around point for the train, um, it's just one big snaking line going from uh, uh, Flaskmere through Chipton through Flaskmere. No, no, from from Flaskmere through Chipton through Julborough up to Redport. There's a lot of names to remember now. I need to start writing them down um, so I can quickly like check the list. One thing I, I think I will do at some point is is make some sort of subway map of the uh, of the the rail system. I'd like I think I'd like the uh, the look of that. But anyway, we arrived in Flaskmere to sort out the loading of the processing units where we found that there were nearly 10 stacks uh, waiting for us, which is excellent. But unfortunately, I've realized that there is circuit unloading in Flaskmere, and so all the circuits that were loaded into the train in Chipton get unloaded into the science system, because at the moment I think it's short on... Well, see, no, it's not into the science system. I mean, some of it goes in there, but the main reason that it was all unloaded was for the actual processing units themselves. So that's a bit of a problem. We're going to get both the... Uh, the electronic circuits and the advanced circuits being unloaded um, onto all the belts when uh, the train arrives in Flaskmere. I could do a bit of tweaking and make it so that this train is also the, the train that supplies the various kinds of circuits to Flaskmere, and that would make a lot of sense because at the moment I think there's now uh, a few different redundant journeys going on. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably just overhaul the whole system uh, at some point in the near future. Setting up the advanced circuit loading there, I've got basically nothing left. I think I used all, like the last of my iron to make those um, those fast inserters, and I'm not sure if I could make a single belt more to extend it beyond where it was. But we managed to get the various things loaded. We'll come back along later and put better inserters and stuff in, probably. But uh, I don't know if it'll matter that much with the current production rate of advanced circuits. I think we need to upgrade that as well. There's quite a lot of upgrading that needs to go on with just every stage of our circuit production, I think. But the train arrives in uh, Julborough, and finally we start getting some modules being produced. Unfortunately, no actual um, electronic circuits arrived, but uh, hopefully on the next uh, journey round uh, they will, because it won't be spending quite so much time in uh, Flaskmere the second time round. So we'll see how that goes, and uh, with any luck there'll be enough coming through to keep the module production going at a decent rate. So I start running along and setting up uh, power poles and stuff like that, signals and... Uh, lights and everything. Just the general infrastructure will put in a redundant connection for power here so that if uh, the biters cut the line between like uh, Colbury and uh, Julborough from the north, they'll still be the south one and everything will be fine. Now we've yet to have that sort of thing yet. Usually the biters will just go straight past the power lines and go straight for the uh, the turrets, which is good because if, if that wasn't the case, I think many, many people's factories would be uh, long gone. But there we go, and the signal's there, and I think, I don't know if I remember, I have to do some, yeah, I have to do the uh, the line to the north as well, get that all sorted out. But uh, that shall be fine. And uh, yeah, so with the uh, the train overhauls, this is something I was expecting to do like every ten episodes or something. I thought I would have done uh, like a few of them by now when I was originally setting up the series. Um, but it, it's never really happened. The, the, I've never had that many different trains going in awkward places to, to have that sort of problem. But basically, the idea that I've had about the uh, the rearranging of the train system is basically to park every single train up in a train yard, which I'll have to build, um, and like just uh, remove all of their uh, timetables, empty them of all the stuff, and then just completely reconstruct all the timetables uh, from scratch uh, to make things a lot more efficient. Because I imagine we're probably using like two more trains than we need to at this point. Um, and I know for a fact that there are multiple trains going um, like to the same stations as each other, and that's just pointless, really. I could uh, I could combine things and uh, make it a lot more efficient. I mean, there's certain cases where throughput is uh, important, but I think a lot of the time it's just uh, like it will be fine to just have one train doing uh, more different jobs. So stuff like this uh, this new circuit line, as I guess I'll call it, will uh, have a lot going on with um, 
with trains there'll probably be like one or two maybe dedicated trains so just running circuits from one place to another uh, but then there could be other trains that have like seven different stations in their uh, in their timetables they just need to deliver lot, lots of little bits and bobs to uh, to different places so that'll be something that we'll probably do in the near future once we've got things stabilized I think in terms of the biters uh, we'll get a parachute we'll kill them all and then we'll have a bit of uh, breathing space to work on that sort of thing uh, but anyway, I'm setting up the uh, the copper line here and getting it all uh, running into the train so that we can help with the uh, circuit production down at Chipton. And I have to run off to uh, to Fortin to grab some more ammo and stuff like that. I think we might need some more turrets as well uh, so that we can actually start putting in some defences here. I'll put in a, a bit in the way of walls, but we'll want some actual uh, defensive turrets there because that is the direction that the biters are attacking from. Basically, west, northwest, southwest, that sort of thing. At the moment, we don't have any defences anywhere else, really, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. There is a small danger of some attacks from, say, the northeast, because uh, we have had bases set up to the northeast of, uh, of Julebra's location before, but um, there is now a giant wall in the way of them doing that sort of thing, so it's been a while since that has happened. Also, it's been a long time, I think, since we've actually had any attacks on the Fort and Wall, uh, thinking about it. I mean, a lot of the time I'm ignoring alarms that are going off, uh, but I, usually they would probably cause some uh, some actual damage to stuff and it's only really the yellow alarms that I'm ignoring so either the wall is just doing a really good job or the biters aren't really attacking the uh, the fort and wall at the moment which is nice takes a bit of pressure off and we can uh, worry about other things like the uh, the desert in the southwest that is now completely swarming with biters um, and yeah it's it's getting quite bad like to the point where biters are now uh, like from the northwest and the southwest are meeting because they've both managed to, to sort of pass the uh, uh, the lake that sort of separates those halves or quarters um, so yeah it's we we'll, we'll have our work cut out like once we actually get the power suit it's going to take a bit of work to actually get all these biter bases pushed back because there are just so many of them now um, and we also need to sort out still all the different components for the power suit so uh, at some point once we've uh, got the situation stabilized with module production we'll go over to Westport and uh, Westport West Point and it is near water actually I could have called it that but anyway we could um well, they already have Redport. We could start setting up some actual consistent production of materials. I, I can't. Remember, I don't think we have any stuff being delivered over there right now, beyond uh, like military equipment from Fortin, basically. So uh, we'll get various bits of circuits and stuff being delivered over there, and uh, get our various bits of uh, power suit stuff ready, so that as soon as we have the actual main power suit, we'll be able to fully kit it out with all the equipment we'll need. Anyway, we're back in Chipton, where the, some recent attacks have been causing us a bit of trouble. We have a lot of damaged turrets and a couple of the destroyed ones, and I basically just like overhaul it a bit. I take out all the ammo and I just put it all back in again uh, in the right numbers. I'm thinking like I should probably put like larger stacks in some of these, but then they just end up getting blown up instead, and the the ammo just goes to waste. Uh, but we add in a, a new section of them a little bit further down where we actually have some room. And with any luck, that'll help. I'm not really sure. Um, the biters are so, so focused on that one particular spot that it's quite difficult to defend it, what with um, me trying to build the turrets around the circuit production. What I should probably do is just extend that wall out, um, but then the biters might attack even more frequently. And that shouldn't really happen, but then, yeah, we, we want to have some more room for more circuit production anyway, so it's going to make sense to, uh, to extend those walls at some point. Anyway, I start setting up some turrets here, but I'm too late! The biters have arrived, and they start blowing them up before I can put any ammo in. I just managed to get a bit of ammo in some of them, and uh, stop the attack, but we lost like half a dozen uh, turrets again. And it's quite infuriating because I set up this wall and all these miners ages ago, and I just got back and I was just about to load ammo into them. I'd even put the turrets down when the biters attacked. And yeah, I was just seconds too late, so that's a bit frustrating, but uh, I probably should have done it a bit sooner, really. Just like scrounge together what ammo I couldn't put in a basic bit of defense rather than just leave it all completely uh, open and then try and do it all at once. But the place is defended for now, so that should be fine, that shouldn't happen again. And uh, hopefully I'll not have any biters springing up on me and trying to blow me up. Because it's becoming something of a theme here, they keep doing this. Like, just as I'm about to build defences, they turn up and start killing me. And yeah, I need to pay more attention and uh, build the turrets just a little bit sooner. And yeah, and, and set up like the, the, the things I used to do where I, I'd put turrets like around the, the, the actual uh, rails as soon as I'd built them in a town. I've just sort of forgotten about that technique. But anyway, we're setting up a bit more of the walls. We run out of our wall supply that we got from uh, West Point last episode. 
and I just put a couple of turrets into basically just mark the corners and I guess defend if biters come from there, it's possible, uh, but that's uh, all of our turrets used up. And uh, to finish we'll just put a bit of lighting on our new Jilbera sign because we can't see it at the moment, we don't have our uh, night vision goggles yet, and it's nice to have a bit of decoration going. Um, and I try and sort of get the lights to line up, but uh, I'm also like starting to run over time, so I just throw it together, try and make them roughly uh, equidistant. And uh, once I have with that, we will finish uh, for today. And so I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.